Hey, this is Jessica from goodenoughandstuff.com. Today we'll be making these super cute and fun pot holders. Um, just like every other project that I do, I kind of figure it out as I go. So some of them turned out kind of wonky and <laughs> it was quite a learning process. But I think in the end they were really good and they're fun and they're very rustic in some ways, which is totally fine. If you've got some drop cloth that you can use or even if you want to use like just regular cotton fabric, you can do that. These are easy to do, easy to put together. So this is made with bleached drop cloth, what I used because it's really durable, but you can use any kind of fabric that you like as long as it's cotton, because um, if you use some kind of polyester blend or something, it'll just melt when you go to take stuff out of the oven. <laughs> it'll just like have holes and stuff. I'll leave a link in the description below uh, uh, for the blog post from Farmhouse on Boone where she talks about um, how to bleach drop cloth. And I think she might actually have a video, so I will leave a link for that. What was all the stuff that I just said? Okay, with all that said, let's talk about what supplies you need. For this project, you'll need a sewing machine, bleached drop cloth scraps, or some kind of cotton fabric that you want to use for the outside, an old cotton towel that you don't mind cutting up, sewing thread, scissors, pins, a pencil, an embroidery needle, some embroidery thread, and optionally you can use cookie cutters for the shapes that you want to use on the outside of it, reference pictures for what you want to use for the embroidery, paper for sketching the pictures, and a rubber band. Here's my sad collection of pot holders. They all have holes and rips and it's time for some new ones. This is the one that I'm going to try and make today. It seems pretty simple, so it should be pretty straightforward. It has some kind of like diamond quilting on it, which I'm a big fan of because it hides a lot of mistakes and like weird wonky lines, which is uh, what I'm all about. And it has like binding on the edges, so you don't have to do any kind of turning inside out like you would with like pillowcases and things. And then it has a cute little loop at the top so you can hang it. If you want to use a pot holder as a reference, grab it and put it on your fabric and then outline it with a pencil. Or you can really do any shape or size that you want to. Just make sure you make two of them because you need a front and a back. Here's my old cotton towel. It's got paint dried all over it so it's kind of scratchy and not nice to use anymore. Cut out another pot holder shape and this will go in between the two drop cloth pieces to add a little bit more insulation. Uh, originally I cut out two layers and it was a little bit too thick so one should do just fine. Pin your layers together with drop cloth on the outsides and towel on the inside like a towel sandwich and then sew along the outside just to keep all the layers together. Don't worry too much if it doesn't quite line up on the edges. Mine is sticking out pretty far. <laughs> now it's time to sew the diagonal quilting lines. So make sure when you're sewing this, um, I didn't sew this very evenly, but <laughs> when you're sewing the lines, you don't want to keep going just down, 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 down. Otherwise you'll end up with puckering. Right there you can see the flap kind of went down and I had to like sew over it. You'll end up with that because it pushes the fabric all down. So what you want to do instead is you like start with, I always start with the center one. You start going down this one and then you, um, I guess you can just flip it like this and then go down the next one. So that way this one is now, that way this one goes this way and this one goes this way. Then you can just flip it again and then sew down that way and then flip it one more time and sew that way and then you just do the same thing on the other side where it, so then you end up having um, you end up having sewing lines that kind of go opposite so this one goes down that one goes up this one goes down that one goes up and you can't tell when you're looking at it but it'll prevent a lot of the puckering just like this I'm just gonna flip it this way and then do the diamonds Make sure you do diamonds like across and not just going straight because then you'll be able to see, it'll look weird against these like rounded corners and rounded edges and stuff. Now you wanna cut out a two inch wide strip of the drop cloth that fits all the way around the pot holder plus some extra inches so that you can use that tail to make the loop at the top of the pot holder. Pin the strip all the way around the edge of the pot holder. When you get to the part where the ends meet, you want to fold the long one up and then put the shorter one on top of that and then pin those to the edge of the pot holder. 
fold the edge of the short end down before you sew. Sew the strip to the pot holder. Here's what it looks like when you're done sewing the edge. Now we're gonna flip the whole thing over and fold the edge of the strip over the raw edge of the pot holder. Fold the edge of the strip under. Oh, this is super hard to do one-handed. When you get to a corner, this is when I was using a wider strip on the edge, so it looks a little funny in this shot. Because it's rounded, you can kind of shove things down in there. You can kind of just make a little pleat, just like that. Take everything on this side in, make a little pleat, and call it good. For the tail that will become the loop, you want to fold both sides in and then fold that in half and then pin it all the way down. When it gets to where it meets the pot holder, it can be a little bit finicky, but just keep working it and kind of tucking things in and then pin it until it gets to the way that you like it. Now sew that down all the way around the pot holder and all the way up the tail. Give the tail a twist and then sew it to the back of the pot holder. Here are the three versions that I made. The first one in the row is the one that where I actually figured out how to do the loop correctly, and so the other two are kind of good tries. Well, it's just going to be rustic. Let's do some embroidery. Because I knew that the drop cloth was going to be kind of hard to get through, to embroider now that it's like all put together. I was looking for some really simple shapes to embroider. I traced the pot holders onto some paper and then I sketched out these really simple triangle trees. If you're like me and symmetry is not really your thing, you can also just grab some Christmas cookie cutters and trace those out. And don't worry about the pencil lead being in contact with something you're gonna use with food because it's actually made out of graphite so there's no lead and it's non-toxic. I need a pencil, Mom. I need a pencil. I need a pencil for, for getting a present. You gonna make a present? Can you show me your tattoos? <laughs> nice, looking good. Okay, here you go. I spent quite a bit of time drawing out this poinsettia, and then I tried to transfer it over using graphite paper. It did not work at all. You could barely see some of the outline, and it just got the graphite all over everything and made it all look really dirty. Ah! Baby. Okay. Well. I did my best to try and wipe off as much as I could, and then I just used a pencil and drew it on. So the only thing is about this, it was really difficult to pull the needle through here. Sometimes, like right now, I'm trying to pull this and I can't get it through this. So it really hurts your fingers after a while. But what I found was that was helpful for me was to wrap a rubber band around the needle and then hold onto that and then kind of like wiggle it back and forth. If you want the embroidery to be easier for you, when you cut out the um, square of fabric before you sew it all together, that's when you want to embroider it. But when you do it like that, that means your embroidery will be underneath your quilting pattern, like this diamond pattern that we have underneath it. So if you don't care about that, then embroider it first and it'll be easier to embroider. But if you do want it to be on top, then you'll have to finish it and then embroider it. Start by using all six strands of the embroidery thread and then cut off the end so the ends are all even. Then I just run them through my front teeth a little bit to flatten them and get them to stick together. And then this makes it a lot easier to get the end through the needle. Tie a single knot in the end of the thread. You don't want it to be too big or else you won't be able to get it through the fabric. So because we've already put this together and we don't want any of the things to show on the other side of it, we're gonna have to hide the knots and the back side of the thread as we go along. Make a stitch just through the top layer of the pot holder and pull it all the way through till the knot pops through the first hole. I pulled that a little bit too hard and it popped through both holes, so I had to pull it back through the second one and now it's just inside the pot holder. 
pull the short end back out as much as you can without popping the knot out and then trim the end off. Then gently tug on the thread and the end just disappears. Continue stitching by going back into the end of the stitch you just finished, going under through the only the top layer of the drop cloth, and then past the end of your stitch that's sticking out. You can see it right here and then coming up. Here's how you turn a corner. Here's what you do when you get to like the end of your thread or the end of the line or you need to switch to some more thread. Make sure you have enough thread to do this with the end. Make a single knot but don't pull it all the way to the fabric. So it's like higher up here so it's past where it's going to be in there. Okay and now I will Stay back through here, this hole. Or just anywhere, as long as the line goes back to where I want it to be. Okay, then I'll stick it in this hole and kind of go sideways to a different spot and pull it through. Then you just keep pulling to get to the knot until it pops in. It did not want to go in this time. Watch me struggle. There we go. Okay, so you can see there's no knot there now. But there's an extra tail here, coming out a weird spot. Pull this a little bit more, and then cut it off, and then kind of rub it in. There we go. Now, there are no knots. The lines are a little wonky, because that's, I'm not great at straight lines, but there's no knots on this one. As opposed to this one, you can see the first one I did, I didn't really think about it. I tried to hide, hide the knot on this side and I tried to hide the knot on this one. Not super successful, but that's okay. They're still looking good. Nice and homemade. Once you finish your embroidery, then you're done. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it and um, let me know if you did in the comments below. This was a really fun project. I really enjoyed doing it and it was nice because I could just take it other places and like sit in the car and wait for my kids. And so once the base thing is done then you can just take it wherever. Let me know if there are other sewing projects that you would like me to do or attempt to do. I tend to just kind of think about it and then figure it out as I'm going so you know it'll take you long for the process. Like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.